Hello, here's a quick video for you on how to join the Math43 StatCrunch group so that you can load data into StatCrunch rather than typing it in from the book. So the first step is to click on the Explore menu right here. That will pop up some options here. You want to choose Groups. And after you've done that, in the search box over here, you want to type Chabot. Just that one word should be good enough. That'll pull up a few different groups from different teachers at Chabot. Make sure you click on the one that has the cover of our book. So click on Meaningful Statistics Davis. And up here, I'm already a member of this group, so it asked me if I want to leave that group. Be kind of weird. It's my own group, so I'll stay in. Yours should say join the group. So you want to click on that, and then you'll be a member of the group. And there are no meetings, no fees, no nothing, no emails no junk mail so you just want to join the group because then you have access to the data so once you join it um, let me show you the process you'll use from now on so you'll be in the group and then from then on when you click onto the my stack crunch tab you have my groups down here so you'll click on that you should see that show up now the meaningful statistics group and so you would click on that and it'll show you some data sets. You want to see all the data sets at once, typically. So click on 20 data sets. Uh, I think yours won't be that big. Um, oh, maybe it is. Same group. So I think, yeah, you'll see all this same data. And then you can just click on the data that you need. So the data we need is from Chapter 3. And it was homework time. So here's Chapter 3, problem number 53 from the Davis book. And it's algebra homework time. So we can click on that one this appears to be the right one look at how many times it's been viewed right so people have used this one a lot for tech projects in the past and then when you do that rather than opening the book and having to type all these numbers in you're just gonna get uh, the data already entered and then you don't have to worry about making any typos when you enter the data yourself and it already gives it a title You can spread that out a little if you wanna see the full title but that's that's all taken care of for you too so for all future assignments that ask you to enter or load data from a problem number in the book, rather than typing it in yourself, you should go to the group page now that you've joined it, and then just click on the data set you need and it'll open it up. I'm just going to show you one other quick piece while I'm making the video here. Uh, you're asked on part 1C to get the mean and standard deviation together with the five number summary. So you do that by choosing stat and summary statistics for a column. And the column is online homework times. And they ask for the mean and standard deviation. So there's a standard list of stuff that comes. And that's not actually what we want for this problem. So we'll click on the mean. And then the standard deviation is right here, but that one is actually the sample standard deviation. And if you were to read this problem in the book, you would see that it is population data. So I'm going to scroll down and look for one that says unadjusted standard deviation. That unadjusted refers to they're dividing by n instead of n minus 1. And that's what we do with population data. So in order to select this one, if let me just show you real quick. If I just click on it, now I have that, but the mean is gone. So what you want to do is click on the mean so that you have that in, and then go to the unadjusted standard deviation and hold down the control key while you click. If you're on a Mac, it's the command key, but the same idea. So hold that down, click on that, and then you're adding things instead of replacing them. And then it asks for the five number summary, so we're going to want to control click on five more items to get that. And I will give you a small hint there that one of the items in the five number summary is the minimum. So I would add that onto the list and my list is growing there. And keep doing that until you have the other four numbers from the five number summary. Don't guess at them. That list is in your notes. And I believe that is in section 3.2 if you want to look that up. But don't guess. Go see what the other four numbers in the five number summary are. Click on those once you have all seven of them in the list over here. You can click Compute, and it'll pop a win up a window that shows for the ones you asked for. My window only has three things. Um, yours will have seven, the mean, the standard deviation, and the five number summaries, of which the minimum is one. 
and then I would suggest like we've been doing on other things that you do a um, snipping tool capture of this window and move it to your report. Uh, right after that it asks you to type in some symbols and I'm going to show you how to do symbols and equations in a separate video so you should find that in the same area of our links page as you found this one. Okay, that's it for this one.